This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, and to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce. The letters N and O. The letter N. Nectar, noun. A drink served at banquets of the Olympian deities. The secret of its preparation is lost, but the modern Kentuckians believe that they come pretty near to a knowledge of its chief ingredient. Juno drank a cup of nectar, but the draught did not affect her. Juno drank a cup of rye, then she bade herself good-bye. By J. G. Negro, noun. The piece de résistance in the American political problem. Representing him by the letter N, the Republicans begin to build their equation thus. Let N equal the white man. This, however, appears to give an unsatisfactory solution. Neighbor, noun. One whom we are commanded to love as ourselves, and who does all he knows how to make us disobedient. Nepotism, noun. Appointing your grandmother to office for the good of the party. Newtonian, adjective. Pertaining to a philosophy of the universe invented by Newton, who discovered that an apple will fall to the ground, but was unable to say why. His successors and disciples have advanced so far as to be able to say when. Nihilist, noun. A Russian who denies the existence of anything but Tolstoy. The leader of the school is Tolstoy. Nirvana, noun. In the Buddhist religion, a state of pleasurable annihilation awarded to the wise, particularly to those wise enough to understand it. Nobleman, noun. Nature's provision for wealthy American minds ambitious to incur social distinction and suffer high life. Noise, noun, a stench in the ear, undomesticated music, the chief product and authenticating sign of civilization. Nominate, verb, to designate for the heaviest political assessment, to put forward a suitable person to incur the mud-gobbling and dead-catting of the opposition. Nominee, noun. A modest gentleman, shrinking from the distinction of private life, and diligently seeking the honourable obscurity of public office. Non-combatant, noun. A dead Quaker. Nonsense, noun. The objections that are urged against this excellent dictionary. Nose, noun, the extreme outpost of the face. From the circumstance that great conquerors have great noses, Gitius, whose writings antedate the age of humour, calls the nose the organ of quell. It has been observed that one's nose is never so happy as when thrust into the affairs of others, from which some physiologists have drawn the interference that the nose is devoid of the sense of smell. There's a man with a nose, and wherever he goes, the people run from him and shout, No cotton have we, for our ears if so be, he blows that interminous snout. So the lawyers applied for injunction, denied, said the judge. The defendant prefiction, whate'er it portend, appears to transcend the bounds of this court's jurisdiction. 
by Arpad Sinjani. Notoriety, noun. The fame of one's competitor for public honours. The kind of renown most accessible and acceptable to mediocrity. A Jacob's ladder leading to the vaudeville stage, with angels ascending and descending. Numinon, noun. That which exists, as distinguished from that which merely seems to exist, the latter being a phenomenon. The numinon is a bit difficult to locate. It can be apprehended only by a process of reasoning, which is a phenomenon. Nevertheless, the discovery and exposition of noumena offer a rich field for what Lewes calls the endless variety and excitement of philosophical thought. Hurrah, therefore, for the noumenon! Novel Noun A short story padded A species of composition bearing the same relation to literature that the panorama bears to art. As it is too long to be read at a sitting, the impressions made by its successive parts are successively effaced, as in the panorama. Unity, totality of effect, is impossible, for besides the few pages last read, all that is carried in mind is the mere plot of what has gone before. To the romance, the novel is what photography is to painting. Its distinguishing principle, probability, corresponds to the literal actuality of the photograph and puts it distinctly into the category of reporting, whereas the free wing of the romancer enables him to mount to such altitudes of imagination as he may be fitted to attain, and the first three essentials of the literary art are imagination, imagination, and imagination. The art of writing novels, such as it was, is long dead everywhere except in Russia, where it is new. Peace to its ashes, some of which have a large sale. November, noun. The eleventh twelfth of a weariness. The letter O. Oath, noun. In law, a solemn appeal to the deity, made binding upon the conscience by a penalty for perjury. Oblivion, noun. The state or condition in which the wicked cease from struggling and the dreary are at rest. Fame's eternal dumping ground, cold storage for high hopes. A place where ambitious authors meet their works without pride and their betters without envy. A dormitory without an alarm clock. Observatory, noun. A place where astronomers conjecture away the guesses of their predecessors. Obsessed, past participle. Vexed by an evil spirit, like the Gardarine swine and other critics. Obsession was once more common than it is now. Arastus tells of a peasant who was occupied by a different devil for every day in the week, and on Sundays by two. They were frequently seen always walking in his shadow when he had one, but were finally driven away by the village notary, a holy man. But they took the peasant with them, for he vanished utterly. A devil thrown out of a woman by the archbishop of Rheims ran through the trees, pursued by a hundred persons, until the open country was reached, where by a leap higher than a church spire he escaped into a bird. A chaplain in Cromwell's army exorcised a soldier's obsessing devil by throwing the soldier into the water when the devil came to the surface. The soldier, unfortunately, did not. Obsolete. Adjective. No longer used by the timid. Said chiefly of words. A word which some lexicographer has marked obsolete is ever thereafter an object of dread and loathing to the fool writer, 
but if it is a good word, and has no exact modern equivalent equally good, it is good enough for the good writer. Indeed, a writer's attitude toward obsolete words is as true a measure of his literary ability as anything except the character of his work. A dictionary of obsolete and obsolescent words would not only be singularly rich in strong and sweet parts of speech, it would add large possessions of the vocabulary of every competent writer who might not happen to be a competent reader. Obstinate, adjective, inaccessible to the truth, as it is manifest in the splendor and stress of our advocacy. The popular type and exponent of obstinacy is the mule, a most intelligent animal. Occasional, adjective, afflicting us with greater or less frequency. That, however, is not the sense in which the word is used in the phrase occasional verses, which are verses written for an occasion, such as an anniversary, a celebration, or other event. True, they afflict us a little worse than other sorts of verse, but their name has no reference to irregular recurrence. Occident, noun. The part of the world lying west or east, of the Orient. It is largely inhabited by Christians, a powerful sub-tribe of the hypocrites, whose principal industries are murder and cheating, which they are pleased to call war and commerce. These also are the principal industry of the Orient. Ocean, noun. A body of water occupying about two-thirds of a world made for man, who has no gills. Offensive, adjective, generating disagreeable emotions or sensations, as the advance of an army against its enemy. Were the enemy's tactics offensive? the king asked. I should say so, replied the unsuccessful general. The black guard wouldn't come out of his works. Old, adjective. In that stage of usefulness which is not inconsistent with general inefficiency, as an old man. Discredited by lapse of time and offensive to the popular taste, as an old book. Old books? The devil take them, Gobi said. Fresh every day must be my books and bread. Nature herself approves the Gobi rule, and gives us every moment a fresh fool. By Harley Shum Oleaginous, adjective. Oily, smooth, sleek. Disraeli once described the manner of Bishop Wilberforce as anxious, oleaginous, saponaceous, and the good prelate was ever afterwards known as Soapy Sam. For every man there is something in the vocabulary that would stick to him like a second skin. His enemies have only to find it. Olympian, adjective, relating to a mountain in Thessaly, once inhabited by gods, now a repository of yellowing newspapers, beer bottles, and mutilated sardine cans, attesting the presence of the tourist and his appetite. His name the smirking tourist scrawls upon Minerva's temple walls, where thundered once Olympian Zeus, and marks his appetite's abuse. By Avril Jupe Omen Noun. A sign that something will happen if nothing happens. Once. Adverb. Enough. Opera. Noun. A play representing life in another world, whose inhabitants have no speech but song, no motions but gestures, and no postures but attitudes. All acting is simulation, 
and the word simulation is from simia, an ape. But in opera the actor takes for his model simia audibilis, or Pithecanthropus stentor, the ape that howls. The actor apes a man, at least in shape. The opera performer apes an ape. Opiate, noun. An unlocked door in the prison of identity. It leads into the jail yard. Opportunity, noun. A favorable occasion for grasping a disappointment. Oppose, verb. To assist with obstructions and objections. How lonely he who thinks to vex with bandinage the solemn sex. Of levity, mere man, beware. None but the grave deserve the unfair. By Percy P. Orminder. Opposition, noun. In politics, the party that prevents the government from running amuck by hamstringing it. The king of Gargaru, who had been abroad to study the science of government, appointed one hundred of his fattest subjects as members of a parliament to make laws for the collection of revenue. Forty of these he named the party of opposition, and had his prime minister carefully instruct them in their duty of opposing every royal measure. Nevertheless, the first one that was submitted passed unanimously. Greatly displeased, the king vetoed it, informing the opposition that if they did that again, they would pay for their obstinacy with their heads. The entire forty promptly disemboweled themselves. "'What shall we do now?' the king asked. "'Liberal institutions cannot be maintained without a party of opposition.' "'Splendour of the universe,' replied the Prime Minister. It is true these dogs of darkness have no longer their credentials, but all is not lost. Leave the matter to this worm of the dust. So the minister had the bodies of His Majesty's opposition embalmed and stuffed with straw, put back into the seats of power, and nailed there. Forty votes were recorded against every bill and the nation prospered. But one day a bill imposing a tax on warts was defeated. The members of the government party had not been nailed to their seats. This so enraged the king that the prime minister was put to death, the parliament was dissolved with a battery of artillery, and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, perished from Gargaru. Optimism Noun the doctrine or belief that everything is beautiful, including what is ugly, everything good, especially the bad, and everything right that is wrong. It is held with greatest tenacity by those most accustomed to the mischance of falling into adversity, and is most acceptably expounded with a grin that apes a smile. Being a blind faith, it is inaccessible to the light of disproof, an intellectual disorder, yielding to no treatment but death. It is hereditary, but fortunately not contagious. Optimist, noun. A proponent of the doctrine that black is white. A pessimist applied to God for relief. Ah, you wish me to restore your hope and cheerfulness said God. No, replied the petitioner, I wish you to create something that would justify them. The world is all created, said God, but you have overlooked something, the mortality of the optimist. Oratory, noun. A conspiracy between speech and action to cheat the understanding. A tyranny tempered by stenography. Orphan, noun. A living person whom death has deprived of the power of filial ingratitude, 
a privation appealing with a particular eloquence to all that is sympathetic in human nature. When young, the orphan is commonly sent to an asylum, where by careful cultivation of its rudimentary sense of locality, it is taught to know its place. It is then instructed in the arts of dependence and servitude, and eventually turned loose to prey upon the world as a boot-black or scullery maid. Orthodox. Noun. An ox wearing the popular religious joke. Orthography. Noun. The science of spelling by the eye instead of the ear. Advocated with more heat than light by the outmates of every asylum for the insane. They have had to concede a few things since the time of Chaucer but are none the less hot in defence of those to be conceded hereafter. A spelling reformer indicted, for fudge was before the court cited. The judge said, Enough! His candle will snuff, and his sepulchre shall not be whited. Ostrich. Noun. A large bird to which for its sins, doubtless, nature has denied that hinder toe in which so many pious naturalists have seen a conspicuous evidence of design. The absence of a good working pair of wings is no defect, for, as has been ingeniously pointed out, the ostrich does not fly. Otherwise, adverb, no better. Outcome. Noun. A particular type of disappointment. By the kind of intelligence that sees in an exception of proof of the rule, the wisdom of an act is judged by the outcome, the result. This is immortal nonsense. The wisdom of an act is to be judged by the light that the doer had when he performed it. Outdo. Transitive verb to make an enemy. Out of doors. Noun. The part of one's environment upon which no government has been able to collect taxes. Chiefly useful to inspire poets. I climbed to the top of a mountain one day to see the sun setting in glory, and I thought, as I looked at his vanishing ray, of a splendidly splendid story. T'was about an old man and the ass he bestrode, till the strength of the beast was o'er-tested. Then the man would carry him miles on the road, till Neddy was pretty well rested. The moon rising solemnly over the crest of the hills to the east of my station displayed her broad disk to the darkening west, like a visible new creation. And I thought of a joke, and I laughed till I cried, of an idle young woman who tarried about a church door for a look at the bride, though it was herself that was married. To poets all nature is pregnant with grand ideas, with thought and emotion. I pity the dunces who don't understand the speech of earth, Heaven and Ocean by Stromboli Smith Ovation, noun In ancient Rome, a definite formal pageant in honour of one who had been disserviceable to the enemies of the nation. A lesser triumph. In modern English, the word is improperly used to signify any loose and spontaneous expression of popular homage to the hero of the hour and place. I had an ovation, the actor man said, but I thought it uncommonly queer that people and critics by him had been led by the ear. The Latin lexicon makes his absurd assertion as plain as a peg. In ovum we find the true root of the word. It means egg by Dudley Spink. Overeat, verb. 
to dine. Hail, gastronome, apostle of excess, well skilled to overeat without distress. Thy great invention, the unfatal feast, shows man's superiority to beast. By John Boop Overwork, noun A dangerous disorder affecting high public functionaries who want to go fishing. O, verb To have, and to hold, a debt. The word formerly signified not indebtedness, but possession. It meant own, and in the minds of debtors there is still a great deal of confusion between assets and liabilities. Oyster, noun. A slimy globby shellfish which civilization gives men the hardihood to eat without removing its entrails. The shells are sometimes given to the poor. End of the letters N and O Read by Gesine in Valletta, March 2006 This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Recording by David Barnes The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce Letters P and Q The Letter P Pain Noun An uncomfortable frame of mind that may have a physical basis in something that is being done to the body, or may be purely mental, caused by the good fortune of another. Painting. Noun. The art of protecting flat surfaces from the weather and exposing them to the critic. Formerly, painting and sculpture were combined in the same work. The ancients painted their statues. The only present alliance between the two arts is that the modern painter chisels his patrons. Palace, noun, a fine and costly residence, particularly that of a great official. The residence of a high dignitary of the Christian church is called a palace. That of the founder of his religion was known as a field or wayside. There is progress. Palm, noun, a species of tree having several varieties, of which the familiar itching palm, palma hominis, is most widely distributed and sedulously cultivated. This noble vegetable exudes a kind of invisible gum, which may be detected by applying to the bark a piece of gold or silver. The metal will adhere with remarkable tenacity. The fruit of the itching palm is so bitter and unsatisfying that a considerable percentage of it is sometimes given away in what are known as benefactions. Palmistry, noun, the 947th method, according to Mimbleshaw's classification, of obtaining money by false pretenses. It consists in reading character in the wrinkles made by closing the hand. The pretense is not altogether false. Character can readily be read very accurately in this way, for the wrinkles in every hand submitted plainly spell the word dupe. The imposture consists in not reading it aloud. Pandemonium, noun. Literally, the place of all the demons. Most of them have escaped into politics and finance and the place is now used as a lecture hall by the audible reformer. When disturbed by his voice, the ancient echoes clamour appropriate responses most gratifying to his pride of distinction. Pantaloons, noun, a nether habiliment of the adult civilised male. The garment is tubular and unprovided with hinges at the points of flexion, supposed to have been invented by a humorist. 
called trousers by the enlightened and pants by the unworthy. Pantheism, noun, the doctrine that everything is God, in contradistinction to the doctrine that God is everything. Pantomime, noun, a play in which the story is told without violence to the language, the least disagreeable form of dramatic action. Pardon, verb, to remit a penalty and restore to the life of crime, to add to the lure of crime the temptation of ingratitude. Passport, noun, a document treacherously inflicted upon a citizen going abroad, exposing him as an alien, and pointing him out for special reprobation and outrage. Past, noun, that part of eternity with some small fraction of which we have a slight and regrettable acquaintance. A moving line called the present parts it from an imaginary period known as the future. These two grand divisions of eternity, of which the one is continually effacing the other, are entirely unlike. The one is dark with sorrow and disappointment, the other is bright with prosperity and joy. The past is the region of sobs. The future is the realm of song. In the one crouches memory, clad in sackcloth and ashes, mumbling penitential prayer. In the sunshine of the other, hope flies with a free wing, beckoning to temples of success and bowers of ease. Yet the past is the future of yesterday, the future is the past of tomorrow. They are one, the knowledge and the dream. Pastime, noun, a device for promoting dejection, gentle exercise for intellectual debility. Patience, noun, a minor form of despair, disguised as a virtue. Patriot, noun, one to whom the interests of a part seem superior to those of the whole, the dupe of statesmen and the tool of conquerors. Patriotism, noun, combustible rubbish read to the torch of any one ambitious to illuminate his name. In Dr. Johnson's famous dictionary, patriotism is defined as the last resort of a scoundrel, with all due respect to an enlightened but inferior lexicographer, I beg to submit that it is the first. Peace, noun, in international affairs, a period of cheating between two periods of fighting. Oh, what's the loud uproar assailing mine ears without cease? Tis the voice of the hopeful, all hailing the horrors of peace. Ah, peace universal, they woo it, would marry it too. If only they knew how to do it, t'were easy to do. They're all working by night and by day on their problem like moles. Have mercy, O heaven, I pray, on their meddlesome souls. By Roe Amil Pedestrian, noun, the variable and audible part of the roadway for an automobile. Pedigree, noun, the known part of the route, from an arboreal ancestor with a swim bladder, to an urban descendant with a cigarette. Penitent, adjective, undergoing or awaiting punishment. Perfection, noun, an imaginary state of quality distinguished from the actual by an element known as excellence, an attribute of the critic. The editor of an English magazine, having received a letter pointing out the erroneous nature of his views and style, and signed, Perfection, promptly wrote at the foot of the letter, I don't agree with you, and mailed it to Matthew Arnold. Peripatetic, adjective, walking about, relating to the philosophy of Aristotle, who, while expounding it, moved from place to place in order to avoid his pupil's objections. A needless precaution, 
they knew no more of the matter than he. Peroration, noun, the explosion of an oratorial rocket. It dazzles, but to an observer having the wrong kind of nose, its most conspicuous peculiarity is the smell of the several kinds of powder used in preparing it. Perseverance, noun, a lowly virtue whereby mediocrity achieves an inglorious success. Persevere, persevere, cry the homilists all, themselves day and night persevering to ball. Remember the fable of tortoise and hare, the one at the goal, while the other is where? Why, back there in dreamland, renewing his lease of life, all his muscles preserving the peace. The goal and the rival forgotten alike, and the long fatigue of the needless hike, his spirit a squat in the grass and the dew of the dogless land beyond the stew. He sleeps like a saint in a holy place, a winner of all that is good in a race. By Succor Uffro Pessimism, noun, a philosophy forced upon the convictions of the observer by the disheartening prevalence of the optimist with his scarecrow hope and his unsightly smile. Philanthropist, noun, a rich and usually bald old gentleman who has trained himself to grin while his conscience is picking his pocket. Philistine, noun, one whose mind is the creature of its environment, following the fashion in thought, feeling, and sentiment. He is sometimes learned, frequently prosperous, commonly clean, and always solemn. Philosophy, noun, a route of many roads leading from nowhere to nothing. Phoenix, noun, the classical prototype of the modern small hot bird. Phonograph, noun, an irritating toy that restores life to dead noises. Photograph, noun, a picture painted by the sun without instruction in art. It is a little better than the work of an Apache, but not quite as good as that of a Cheyenne. Phrenology, noun, the science of picking the pocket through the scalp. It consists in locating and exploiting the organ that one is dupe with. Physician, noun, one upon whom we set our hopes when ill and dogs when well. Physiognomy, the art of determining the character of another by the resemblances and differences between his face and our own, which is the standard of excellence. There is no art, says Shakespeare, foolish man, to read the mind's construction in the face. The physiognomists his portrait scan and say, how little wisdom here we trace. He knew his face disclosed his mind and heart, so, in his own defence, denied our art. By Lavatar Shunk Piano, noun, a parlour utensil for subduing the impenitent visitor. It is operated by pressing the keys of the machine and the spirits of the audience. Piccanini, noun, the young of the Procyanthropos, or Americanus Dominans, it is small, black, and charged with political fatalities. Picture, noun, a representation in two dimensions of something wearisome in three. Behold great Dobert's picture here on view, taken from life, if that description's true. Grant heavenly powers that I be taken too. By Jally Hain. Pie, noun, an advance agent of the reaper whose name is indigestion. Cold pie was highly esteemed by the remains. Reverend D. Mucker, in a funeral sermon over a British nobleman. Cold pie is a detestable American comestible. That's why I'm done, or undone, so far from that dear London. 
from the headstone of a British nobleman in Kalamazoo. Piety, noun, reverence for the supreme being based upon his supposed resemblance to man. The pig is taught by sermons and epistles to think the god of swine has snout and bristles. By Judibras. Pig, noun, an animal, porcus omnivorus, closely allied to the human race by the splendour and vivacity of its appetite, which, however, is inferior in scope, for it sticks at pig. Pygmy, noun, one of a tribe of very small men found by ancient travellers in many parts of the world, but by modern in central Africa only. The pygmies are so called to distinguish them from the bulkier Caucasians, who are hogmies. Pilgrim, noun, a traveller that is taken seriously. A pilgrim father was one who, leaving Europe in 1620, because not permitted to sing psalms through his nose, followed it to Massachusetts, where he could personate God according to the dictates of his conscience. Pillory, noun, a mechanical device for inflicting personal distinction, prototype of the modern newspaper, conducted by persons of austere virtues and blameless lives. Piracy, noun, commerce without its folly swaddles, just as God made it. Pitiful, adjective, the state of an enemy or opponent, after an imaginary encounter with oneself. Pity, noun, a failing sense of exemption, inspired by contrast. Plagiarism, noun, a literary coincidence, compounded of a discreditable priority and an honourable subsequence. Plagiarize, verb, to take the thought or style of another writer whom one has never, never read. Plague, noun. In ancient times a general punishment of the innocent for admonition of their ruler, as in the familiar instance of Pharaoh the immune. The plague as we of today have the happiness to know it is merely nature's fortuitous manifestation of her purposeless objectionableness. Plan, verb transitive, to bother about the best method of accomplishing an accidental result. Platitude, noun, the fundamental element and special glory of popular literature, a thought that snores in words that smoke, the wisdom of a million fools in the diction of a dullard, a fossil sentiment in artificial rock. A moral without the fable, all that is mortal of a departed truth, the dummy tasse of milk and mortality, the pope's nose of a featherless peacock, a jellyfish withering on the shore of the sea of thought, the cackle surviving the egg, the desiccated epigram. Platonic, adjective, pertaining to the philosophy of Socrates, Platonic love is a fool's name for the affection between a disability and a frost. Plaudits, noun, coins with which the populace pays those who tickle and devour it. Please, verb, to lay the foundation for a superstructure of imposition. Pleasure, noun, the least hateful form of dejection. Plebeian, noun, an ancient Roman, who in the blood of his country stained nothing but his hands. Distinguished from the patrician, who was a saturated solution. Plebiscite, noun, a popular vote to ascertain the will of the sovereign. Plenipotentiary, adjective, having full power. A minister plenipotentiary, is a diplomatist possessing absolute authority on condition that he never exert it. Pleonasm, 
noun, an army of words escorting a corporal of thought. Plough, noun, an implement that cries aloud for hands accustomed to the pen. Plunder, verb, to take the property of another without observing the decent and customary reticences of theft. To effect a change of ownership with the candid concomitance of a brass band. To wrest the wealth of A from B and leave C lamenting a vanishing opportunity. Pocket, noun, the cradle of motive and the grave of conscience. In woman this organ is lacking, so she acts without motive, and her conscience, denied burial, remains ever alive, confessing the sins of others. Poetry, noun, a form of expression peculiar to the land beyond the magazines. Poker, noun, a game said to be played with cards, for some purpose to this lexicographer unknown. Police, noun, an armed force for protection and participation. Politeness, noun, the most acceptable hypocrisy. Politics, noun, a strife of interests masquerading as a contest of principles, the conduct of public affairs for private advantage. Politician, noun, an eel in the fundamental mud upon which the superstructure of organized society is reared. When he wriggles, he mistakes the agitation of his tail for the trembling of the edifice. As compared with the statesman, he suffers the disadvantage of being alive. Polygamy, noun, a house of atonement, or expiatory chapel, fitted with several stools of repentance, as distinguished from monogamy, which has but one. Populist, noun, a fossil patriot of the early agricultural period, found in the old red soapstone underlying Kansas, characterized by an uncommon spread of ear, which some naturalists contend gave him the power of flight, though Professors Morse and Whitney, pursuing independent lines of thought, have ingeniously pointed out that had he possessed it, he would have gone elsewhere. In the picturesque speech of his period, some fragments of which have come down to us, he was known as the matter with Kansas. Portable, adjective, exposed to a mutable ownership, through vicissitudes of possession. His light estate, if neither he did make it, nor yet his former guardian forsake it, is portable improperly, I take it. Wargam Slupsky Portuguese, noun plural, a species of geese indigenous to Portugal. They are mostly without feathers and imperfectly edible, even when stuffed with garlic. Positive, adjective, mistaken at the top of one's voice. Positivism, noun, a philosophy that denies our knowledge of the real and affirms our ignorance of the apparent. Its longest exponent is Comte, its broadest Mill, and its thickest Spencer. Posterity, noun, an appellate court which reverses the judgment of a popular author's contemporaries, the appellant being his obscure competitor. Potable, noun, suitable for drinking. Water is said to be potable. Indeed, some declare it our natural beverage, although even they find it palatable only when suffering from the recurrent disorder known as thirst, for which it is a medicine. Upon nothing has so great and diligent ingenuity been brought to bear in all ages and in all countries, except the most uncivilized, as upon the invention of substitutes for water. To hold that this general aversion to that liquid has no basis in the preservative instinct of the race is to be unscientific, and without science we are as the snakes and toads. Poverty, 
noun, a file provided for the teeth of the rats of reform. The number of plans for its abolition equals that of the reformers who suffer from it, plus that of the philosophers who know nothing about it. Its victims are distinguished by possession of all the virtues, and by their faith in leaders seeking to conduct them into a prosperity where they believe these to be unknown. Pray, verb, to ask that the laws of the universe be annulled on behalf of a single petitioner, confessedly unworthy. Preadamite, noun, one of an experimental and apparently unsatisfactory race, which antedated creation, and lived under conditions not easily conceived. Melsius believed them to have inhabited the void, and to have been something intermediate between fishes and birds. Little is known of them beyond the fact that they supplied Cain with a wife, and theologians with a controversy. Precedent, noun, in law, a previous decision, rule, or practice, which, in the absence of a definite statute, has whatever force and authority a judge may choose to give it, thereby greatly simplifying his task of doing as he pleases. As there are precedents for everything, he has only to ignore those that make against his interest, and accentuate those in the line of his desire. Invention of the precedent elevates the trial at law from the low estate of a fortuitous ordeal to the noble attitude of a dirigible arbitrament. Precipitate, adjective, anteprandial. Precipitate in all, this sinner took action first, and then his dinner, by Judibras. Predestination, noun the doctrine that all things occur according to programme. This doctrine should not be confused with that of foreordination, which means that all things are programmed, but does not affirm their occurrence, that being only an implication from other doctrines by which this is entailed. The difference is great enough to have deluged Christendom with ink, to say nothing of the gore. With the distinction of the two doctrines kept well in mind, and a reverent belief in both, one may hope to escape perdition if spared. Predicament, noun, the wage of consistency. Predilection, noun, the preparatory stage of disillusion. Preexistence, noun, an unnoted factor in creation. Preference, noun, a sentiment or frame of mind induced by the erroneous belief that one thing is better than another. An ancient philosopher, expounding his conviction that life is no better than death, was asked by a disciple why, then, he did not die. Because, he replied, death is no better than life. It is longer. Prehistoric, adjective, belonging to an early period, and a museum, antedating the art and practice of perpetuating falsehood. He lived in a period prehistoric, when all was absurd and phantasmagoric, born later when Clio, celestial recorded, set down great events in succession and order. He surely had seen nothing droll or fortuitous in anything here but the lies that she threw at us. Orpheus Bowen Prejudice, noun, a vagrant opinion without visible means of support. Prelate, noun, a church officer having a superior degree of holiness and a fat preferment. One of heaven's aristocracy, a gentleman of God. Prerogative, noun, a sovereign's right to do wrong. Presbyterian, noun, one who holds the conviction that the government authorities of the church should be called presbyters. Prescription, noun, a physician's guess at what will best prolong the situation with least harm to the patient. 
Present, noun, that part of eternity dividing the domain of disappointment from the realm of hope. Presentable, adjective, hideously apparelled after the manner of the time and place. In Buryobulagar, a man is presentable on occasions of ceremony if he have his abdomen painted a bright blue and wear a cow's tail. In New York he may, if it pleases him, omit the paint, but after sunset he must wear two tails made of the wool of a sheep and dyed black. Preside, verb, to guide the action of a deliberative body to a desirable result. In journalese, to perform upon a musical instrument, as he presided at the piccolo. The headliner, holding the copy in hand, read with a solemn face, The music was very uncommonly grand, the best that was ever provided, for our townsman Brown presided at the organ with skill and grace. The headliner discontinued to read, and spread the paper down. On the desk he dashed in at the top of the screed, Great Playing by President Brown. By Orpheus Bowen Presidency, noun, the greased pig in the field game of American politics. President, noun, the leading figure in a small group of men of whom, and of whom only, it is positively known that immense numbers of their countrymen did not want any of them for president. If that's an honour, surely it is a greater to have been a simple and undamned spectator, Behold in me a man of mark and note, whom no elector e'er denied a vote, an undiscredited, unhooted gent, who might, for all we know, be president, by acclamation, cheer, ye varlets, cheer, I'm passing with a wide and open ear, by Jonathan Fomry. Prevaricator, noun, a liar in the caterpillar estate. Price noun value plus a reasonable sum for the wear and tear of conscience in demanding it primate noun the head of a church especially a state church supported by involuntary contributions the primate of england is the archbishop of canterbury an amiable old gentleman who occupies lambeth palace when living and westminster abbey when dead he is commonly dead Prison, noun, a place of punishments and rewards. The poet assures us that stone walls do not a prison make, but a combination of the stone wall, the political parasite, and the moral instructor is no garden of sweets. Private, noun, a military gentleman with a field marshal's baton in his knapsack and an impediment in his hope. Proboscis, noun, the rudimentary organ of an elephant which serves him in place of the knife and fork that evolution has as yet denied him. For purposes of humour, it is popularly called a trunk. Asked how he knew that an elephant was going on a journey, the illustrious Joe Miller cast a reproachful look upon his tormentor and answered absently, When it's a jar and threw himself from a high promontory into the sea. Thus perished in his pride the most famous humorist of antiquity, leaving to mankind a heritage of woe. No successor worthy of the title has appeared, though Mr. Edward Bock of the Ladies Home Journal is much respected for the purity and sweetness of his personal character. Projectile. Noun the final arbiter in international disputes. Formerly these disputes were settled by physical contact of the disputants, with such simple arguments as the rudimentary logic of the times could supply, the sword, the spear, and so forth. With the growth of prudence in military affairs, the projectile came more and more into favour, and is now held in high esteem by the most courageous. Its capital defect is that it requires personal attendance at the point of propulsion. Proof. Noun. 
evidence having a shade more of plausibility than of unlikelihood, the testimony of two credible witnesses as opposed to that of only one. Proofreader, noun, a malefactor who atones for making your writing nonsense by permitting the compositor to make it unintelligible. Property, noun, any material thing having no particular value that may be held by A against the cupidity of B. Whatever gratifies the passion for possession in one and disappoints it in all others, the object of man's brief rapacity and long indifference. Prophecy, noun, the art and practice of selling one's credibility for future delivery. Prospect, noun, an outlook usually forbidding, an expectation usually forbidden. Blow, blow, ye spicy breezes, o'er Ceylon, blow your breath, where every prospect pleases, save only that of death. By Bishop Sheba. Providential, adjective, unexpectedly and conspicuously beneficial to the person so describing it. Prude, noun, a board hiding behind the back of her demeanour. Publish, noun, in literary affairs, to become the fundamental element in a cone of critics. Push, noun, one of the two things mainly conducive to success, especially in politics. The other is pull. Pyrrhonism, noun, an ancient philosophy named for its inventor. It consisted of an absolute disbelief in everything but Pyrrhonism. Its modern professors have added that. End of the letter P. The letter Q. Queen. Noun. A woman by whom the realm is ruled when there is a king, and through whom it is ruled when there is not. Quill. Noun. An implement of torture yielded by a goose and commonly wielded by an ass. This use of the quill is now obsolete, but its modern equivalent, the steel pen, is wielded by the same everlasting presence. Quiver, noun, a portable sheath in which the ancient statesman and the aboriginal lawyer carried their lighter arguments. He extracted from his quiver, did the controversial Roman, an argument well fitted to the question as submitted, then addressed it to the liver of the unpersuaded foeman, by Oglum P. Boop. Quixotic, adjective, absurdly chivalric, like Don Quixote. An insight into the beauty and excellence of this incomparable adjective is unhappily denied to him who has the misfortune to know that the gentleman's name is pronounced Quixote. When ignorance from out of our lives can banish philology, tis folly to know Spanish. By Juan Smith. Quorum, noun, a sufficient number of members of a deliberative body to have their own way and their own way of having it. In the United States Senate, a quorum consists of the chairman of the Committee on Finance, and a messenger from the White House. In the House of Representatives, it is the Speaker and the Devil. Quotation, noun, the act of repeating erroneously the words of another, the words erroneously repeated. Intent on making his quotation truer, he sought the page infallible of Brewer, then made a solemn vow that we would be condemned eternally, ah me, ah me, by Stumpo Gaker. Quotient, noun, a number showing how many times a sum of money belonging to one person is contained in the pocket of another, usually about as many times as it can be got there. End of letter Q in the Devil's Dictionary. Recorded by David Barnes, London, April 2006. This is a LibriVox recording. 
All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please contact LibriVox.org. Recording by All Dark. The Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce. The letter R. Rabble. Noun. In a republic, those who exercise a supreme authority tempered by fraudulent elections. The rabble is like the sacred submerge of Arabian fable, omnipotent on condition that it do nothing. The word is Aristocrates, and has no exact equivalent in our tongue, but means, as nearly as may be, soaring swine. Rack. Noun. An argumentative implement formerly much used in persuading devotees of a false faith to embrace the living truth. As a call to the unconverted, the rack never had any particular efficacy, and is now held in light popular esteem. Rank. Noun. Relative elevation in the scale of human worth. He held at court a rank so high, the other nobleman asked why. Because, t'was answered, others lack his skill to cratch the royal back. By Aramis Jukes. Ransom. Noun. The purchase of that which neither belongs to the seller, nor can belong to the buyer. The most unprofitable of investments. Rapacity. Noun. Providence without industry. The thrift of power. Rarebit. Noun. A Welsh rabbit. In the speech of the humorless who point out that it is not a rabbit to whom it may be solemnly explained that the combustible known as a toad in a hole is really not a toad and that re de vola financière is not the smile of a calf prepared after the recipe of a she-banker rascal noun a fool considered under another aspect rascality noun Stupidity militant, the activity of a clouded intellect. Rash, adjective, insensible to the value of our advice. Now, lay your bet with mine, nor let these gamblers take your cash. Nay, this child makes no bet. Great snakes, how can you be so rash? By Boodle P. Gish. Rational. Adjective. Devoid of all delusions, save those of observation, experience, and reflection. Rattlesnake. Noun. Our prostrate brother. Homo ventrambulans. Razor. Noun. An instrument used by the Caucasian to enhance his beauty, by the Mongolian to make a guy of himself, and by the Afro-American to affirm his worth. Reach. Noun. The radius of action of the human hand. The area within which it is possible and customary to gratify directly the propensity to provide. This is a truth as old as the hills that life and experience teach. The poor man suffers that keenest of ills, an impediment of his reach. By G. J. Reading. Noun. The general body of what one reads. In our country it consists, as a rule, of Indian novels, short stories in dialect, and humor in slang. We know by one's reading his learning and breeding. By what draws his laughter we know his hereafter. Read nothing, laugh never, the sphinx was less clever. By Jupiter Muc. Radicalism. Noun. The conservatism of tomorrow injected into the affairs of today. Radium. Noun. A mineral that gives off heat and stimulates the organ that a scientist is a fool with. Railroad. Noun. The chief of many mechanical devices enabling us to get away from where we are to where we are no better off. For this purpose, the railroad is held in highest favor by the optimist for it permits him to make the transit with great expedition. Ramshackle. Adjective. 
pertaining to a certain order of architecture, otherwise known as a normal American noun, most of the public buildings of the United States are of the ramshackle order, though some of our earlier architects preferred the ironic. Recent additions to the White House in Washington are Theodoric, the ecclesiastic order of the Dorians, they are exceedingly fine and cost one hundred dollars a brick. Realism Noun The art of depicting nature as it is seen by toads. The charm suffusing a landscape painted by a mole or a story written by a measuring worm. Reality Noun The dream of a mad philosopher. That which would remain in the couple if one should essay a phantom the nucleus of a vacuum. Really. Adverb. Apparently. Rear. Noun. In American military matters, that exposed part of the army that is nearest to Congress. Reason. Intransitive verb. To weight probabilities in the scales of desire. Reason. Noun propensitate of prejudice reasonable adjective accessible to the infection of our own opinions hospitable to persuasion dissuasion and evasion rebel noun a proponent of a new misrule who has failed to establish it recollect verb to recall with additions something not previously known Reconciliation, noun, a suspension of hostilities, an armed truce for the purpose of digging up the dead. Reconsider, verb, to seek a justification for a decision already made. Recount, noun, in American politics, another throw of the dice accorded to the player against whom they are loaded. Recreation, noun, a particular kind of dejection to relieve a general fatigue. Recruit. Noun. A person distinguishable from a civilian by his uniform and from a soldier by his gait. Fresh from the farm or factory or street, his marching in pursuit or in retreat, were an impressive martial spectacle except for two impediments, his feet. By Thompson Johnson Rector noun in the Church of England the third person of the parochial trinity the curate and the vicar being the other two redemption noun deliverance of sinners from the penalty of their sin through their murder of the deity against whom they sinned the doctrine of redemption is the fundamental mystery of our holy religion and whoso believeth in it shall not perish, but have everlasting life in which to try and understand it. We must awake a man's spirit from his sin, and take some special measure for redeeming it. Though hard indeed the task to get it in, among the angels any way but teeming it, or purify it otherwise than steaming it, I am awkward at redemption, a beginner, my method is to crucify the sinner. By Golgo Bron. Redress, noun, reparation without satisfaction. Among the Anglo-Saxon, a subject conceiving himself wronged by the king was permitted, on proving his injury, to beat a brazen image of the royal offender with a switch that was afterward applied to his own naked back. The latter rite was performed by the public hangman, and it assured moderation in the plaintiff's choice of a switch. Redskin, noun. A North American Indian whose skin is not red, at least not on the outside. Redundant. Adjective. Superfluous. Needless. De troupe. The Sultan said, There is evidence abundant to prove his unbelieving dog redundant. To whom the Grand Vizier, with mind impressive, replied, His head, at least, appears excessive. By Habib Suleiman. Mr. Debs is a redundant citizen, attributed to Theodore Roosevelt.
Referendum Noun A law for submission of proposed legislation to a popular vote to learn the nonsensus of public opinion. Reflection Noun An action of the mind whereby we obtain a clear view of our relation to the things of yesterday and are able to avoid the perils that we shall not again encounter. Reform Verb a thing that mostly satisfies reformers opposed to reformation. Refuge Noun Anything assuring protection to one in peril. Moses and Joshua provided six cities of refuge Bezer, Golan, Ramoth, Kadesh, Shechem, and Hebron to which one who had taken life inadvertently could flee when hunted by relatives of the deceased. This admirable expedient supplied him with wholesome exercise and enabled them to enjoy the pleasures of the chase, whereby the soul of the dead man was appropriately honored by observations akin to the funeral games of early Greece. Refusal Noun Denial of something desired, as an elderly maiden's hand in marriage to a rich and handsome suitor. A valuable franchise to a rich corporation by an alderman, absolution to an impenitent king by a priest, and so forth. Refusals are graded in a descending scale of finality, thus, the refusal absolute, the refusal condition, the refusal tentative, and the refusal feminine. The last is called by some casuists the refusal assentive. Regalia Noun Distinguishing insignia, jewels and costume of such ancient and honorable orders as Knights of Adam, visionaries of detectable Bosch, the ancient order of modern troglodytes, the League of Holy Humbug, the golden flanks of the phalangers, the genteel society of expurgated hoodlums, the mystic alliances of gorgeous regalians, knights and ladies of the yellow dog, the Oriental Order of Sons of the West, the Blatherhood of Insufferable Stuff, Warriors of the Longbow, Guardians of the Great Horned Spoon, the Band of Brutes, the Impotent Order of Wife Beaters, the Sublime Legion of Flamboyant Conspicuance, Worshippers at the Electroplated Shrine, Shining Inaccessibles, Fee-Faw Fummers of the Inimitable grip, janissaries of the broad-blown peacock, plumed encrescences of the magic temple, the grand cabal of able-bodied sedentarians, associated deities of the butter trade, the garden of galutes, the affectionate fraternity of men similarly warted, the flashing astonishers, Ladies of Horror, Cooperative Association for Breaking into the Spotlight, Dukes of Eden, Disciples of Militant of the Hidden Faith, Knights, Champions of the Domestic Dog, the Holy Gregarians, the Resolute Optimists, the Ancient Sodality of Inhospitable Hogs, Associated Sovereigns of Mendacity, Dukes, Guardians of the Mystic Cesspool, the Society for Prevention of Prevalence, Kings of Drink, Polite Federation of Gents Consequential, the Mysterious Order of the Indecipherable Scroll, Uniformed Rank of Lousy Cats, Monarchs of Worth and Hunger, Sons of the South Star, Prelates of the Tub and Sword. Religion Noun A daughter of hope and fear, explaining to ignorance the nature of the unknowable. What is your religion, my son? inquired the Archbishop of Reims. Pardon, monsieur, replied Rochebriant. I'm ashamed of it. Then why do you not become an atheist? Impossible. I should be ashamed of atheism. In that case, monsieur, you should join the Protestants. Reliquary Noun 
a receptacle for such sacred objects as pieces of the true cross, short ribs of the saints, the ears of Balaam's ass, the lung of the cock that called Peter to repentance, and so forth. Reliquaries are commonly of metal and provided with a lock to prevent the contents from coming out and performing miracles at the unseasonable times. A feather from the wing of an angel of the Annunciated once escaped during a sermon in St. Peter's and so tickled the noses of the congregation that they woke and sneezed with great vehemence three times each. It is related to the Gesta Sanctorum that a sacristan in the Canterbury Cathedral surprised the head of the St. Dennis in the library. Reprimanded by its stern custodian, he had explained that it was seeking the body of doctrine. This unseemly levity so raged at Diocesan that the offender was publicly anathematized, thrown to the stour, and replaced by another head of St. Dennis, brought from Rome. Renown Noun A degree of distinction between notoriety and fame, a little more supportable than the one, a little more intolerable than the other. Sometimes it is conferred by an unfriendly and inconsiderate hand. I touched a harp in every key, but found no heeding ear, and then the ethereal touched me with a revealing spear. Not all my genius, great as tis, could urge me out of night. I felt the faint applause of his and leapt into the light. By W. J. Candleton Reparation Noun. Satisfaction that is made for a wrong and deducted from the satisfaction felt at committing it. Repartee. Noun. Prudent to insult and retort. Practiced by gentlemen with a constitutional aversion to violence, but a strong disposition to offend. In a war of words, the tactics of the North American Indian. Repentance. Noun the faithful attendant and follower of punishment. It is unusually manifest in a degree of reformation that is not inconsistent with continuity of sin. Desires to avoid the pains of hell. You will repent, then join the church, Parnell. How needless! Nick will keep you off the coals and add you to the woes of other souls. By Jomater Abame Replica Noun. A reproduction of a work of art by the artist that made the original. It is so called to distinguish it from a copy which is made by another artist. When the two are met with equal skill, the replica is more valuable for it is supposed to be more beautiful than it looks. Reporter. Noun. A writer who guesses his way to the truth and dispels it with a tempest of words. More dear than all my blossom knows, O thou, whose lips are sealed and will not disavow. So sang the blithe reporter man as grew beneath his hand the leg-long interview. By Barson Maith. Repose. A transitive verb. To cease from troubling. Representative. Noun. In national politics, a member of the lower house in this world and without discernible hope of promotion in the next. Reprobation Noun In theology, the state of a luckless mortal prenatally damned, the doctrine of reprobation was taught by Calvin, whose joy in it was somewhat marred by the sad sincerity of his conviction that although some are foredoomed for perdition, others are predestined to salvation. Republic. Noun. A nation in which the thing governing and the thing governed being the same, there is only a permitted authority to enforce an optional obedience. In a republic, the foundation of public order is the ever lessening habit of submission inherited from ancestors who, being truly governed, submitted because they had to. There are as many kinds of republics as there are graduations between the despotism whence they came, and the anarchy whither they led. Requiem. Noun. 
a mass for the dead which the minor poets assure us the winds will sing over the graves of their favorites sometimes by way of providing a varied entertainment they sing a dirge resident adjective unable to leave resign transitive verb to renounce an honor for an advantage to renounce an advantage for a greater advantage twas rumored leonard wood had signed a true renunciation of title rank and every kind of military station each honorable station by his example fired inclined to noble emulation the country humbly was resigned to leonard's resignation his christian resignation by Polishian Graham Resolute Adjective Obstinate in a course that we approve Respectability Noun The offspring of a liaison between a bald head and a bank account Respirator Noun An apparatus fitted over the nose and mouth of an inhabitant of London whereby to filter the visible universe in its passage to the lungs. Respite Noun A suspension of hostilities against a sentenced assassin to enable the executive to determine whether a murder may not have been done by the prosecuting attorney. Any break in the continuity of a disagreeable expectation. Altgeld, upon his incandescent bed, lay an attendant demon at his head oh crew cook grant me some relief some respite from the roast however brief remember how on earth i pardoned all your friends in illinois when held in thrall unhappy soul for that alone you squirm over fire unquenched a never dying worm yet for i pity your uneasy state your doom i'll mollify and pains abate not for a season shall your comfort mar, not even the memory of who you are. Throughout eternal space dread silence fell, heaven trembled as compassion entered hell. As long, sweet demon, let my respite be, as governing down here I respite thee. As long, poor soul, as any of the pack, you thrust from jail, consumed in getting back. A genial chill affected all guilds hide, why they were turning him on the other side by joel spate whoop resplendent adjective like a simple american citizen beduking himself in his lodge or affirming his consequence in the sheen of things as an elemental unit of a parade the knights of dominion were so resplendent in their velvet and gold that their masters would hardly have known them from Chronicles of the Classes Respond Intransitive verb To make answer or disclose otherwise a consciousness of having inspired an interest in what Herbert Spencer calls external coexistences As Satan squat like a toad at the ear of Eve responded to the touch of the angel's spear To respond in damages is to contribute to the maintenance of the plaintiff's attorney and incidentally to the gratification of the plaintiff. Responsibility Noun A detachable burden easily shifted to the shoulders of God, fate, fortune, luck, or one's neighbor. In the days of astrology it was customary to unload it upon a star. Alas, things ain't what we should see. If Eve had let the apple be, and many a feller which had ought, to set with monarchies of thought, or play some rosy little game with battle chaps on a field of fame, is down by this unlucky star and hollers, Peanuts, here you are, from the sturdy beggar. Restitutions, noun. The founding or endowing of universities and public libraries by gift or bequest. Restitutor, noun, benefactor, philanthropist. Retaliation, 
Noun. The natural rock upon which is reared the temple of law. Retribution. Noun. A rain of fire and brimstone that falls alike upon the just and such of the unjust have not procured shelter by evicting them. In the lines following, addresses to an emperor in exile by father, Gasalica Jape, the reverend poet appears to hint his sense of the imprudence of turning about to face retribution what it is talking exercise. What, what, Don Pedro? You desire to go back to Brazil and to end your days in quiet. Why? What assurance have you it would be so? Tis not so long since you were in a riot, and your dear subjects showed a will to fly at your throat and shake you like a rat. You know that empires are ungrateful. Are you certain republics are less handy to get hurt in? Revealia. Noun. A signal to sleeping soldiers to dream of battlefields no more, but get up and have their blue noses counted. In the American army, it is ingeniously called Reveille. And to that pronunciation, our countrymen have pledged their lives, their misfortunes, and their sacred dishonor. Revelation. Noun. A famous book in which St. John the Divine concealed all he knew. The revealing is done by the commentators who know nothing. Reverence. Noun. The spiritual attitude of a man to a god and a dog to a man. Review. Transient verb. To set your wisdom, holding not a doubt of it, although in truth there is neither bone nor skin to it, at work upon a book, and so read out of it the qualities that you have first read into it. By Anonymous. Revolution. Noun. In politics, an abrupt change of the form of misgovernment specifically in American history, the substitution of the rule of the administration for that of a ministry, whereby the welfare and happiness of the people were advanced a full half-inch. Revolutions are usually accompanied by a considerable effusion of blood, but are counted worth it. This appraisement being made by beneficiaries whose blood had not the mischance to be shed, the French Revolution is of incalculable value to the socialist of today. When he pulls a string actuating its bones, its gestures are inexpressibly terrifying to the gory tyrant suspected of fomenting law and order. Radomancer Noun One who uses a divining rod in prospecting for precious metals in the pocket of a fool. Ribaldry Noun Censorious language by another concerning oneself. Ribroaster. Noun. Censorious language by oneself concerning another. The word is of classical refinement and is even said to have been used in a fable by Georgius Cajuter, one of the most fastidious writers of the 15th century, commonly, indeed, regarded as the founder of the fastidiotic school. Ricewater. Noun. A mystic beverage secretly used by our most popular novelists and poets to regulate the imagination and narcotize the conscience. It is said to be rich in both obtunite and lethargine, and is brewed in a midnight fog by a fat of which the dismal swamp. Rich. Adjective. Holding in trust and subject to an accounting the property of the indolent, the incompetent, the unthrifty, the envious, and the luckless. That is the view that prevails in the underworld where the brotherhood of man finds its most logical development and candid advocacy. To denizens of the midworld, the word means good and wise. Riches. Noun. A gift from heaven signifying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Attributed to John D. Rockefeller. The reward of toil and virtue attributed to j p morgan the sayings of many in the hands of one attributed to 
Eugene Debs. To these excellent definitions, the inspired lexicographer feels that he can add nothing of value. Ridicule. Noun. Words designed to show that the person of whom they are uttered is devoid of the dignity of character distinguish him who utters them. It may be graphic, mimetic, or merely rident. Shaftesbury is quoted as having pronounced it a, the test of truth, a ridiculous assertion for many and solemn fallacy has undergone centuries of ridicule with no abatement of its popular acceptance. What, for example, has been more valorously derided than the doctrine of infant respectability? Right. Noun. Legitimate authority to be, to do, or have, as the right to be a king, the right to do one's neighbor, the right to have measles, and the like. The first of these rights was once universally believed to be derived directly from the will of God, and this is still sometimes affirmed in partibus infidelium outside the enlightened realms of democracy, as the well-known lines of Sir Abdenego Bink following. By what right then do royal rulers rule? Who is the sanction of their state and power? He surely were as stubborn as a mule, who, God unwilling, could maintain an hour. His uninvited session on the throne or heir, his pride securely in the presidential chair. Whatever is, is so by right divine. Whatever occurs, God will it is so. Good land, it were a wondrous thing if his design a fool could baffle or a rogue withstand. If so, then God, I say, intending no offense, is guilty of contributory negligence. Righteousness. Noun. A sturdy virtue that was once found among the pantadoodles inhabiting the lower part of the peninsula of Oak. Some feeble attempts were made by returned missionaries to introduce it into several European countries, but appears to have been imperfectly expounded. An example of this faulty exposition is found only in the extent sermon of the pious Bishop Rowley, a characteristic passage from which is here given. Now righteousness consisteth not merely in a holy state of mind, nor yet in performance of religious rites and obedience to the letter of the law. It is not enough that one be pious and just, one must see it to the others are also in the same state. And to this end, compulsion is a proper means, for as much as my injustice may work ill to another, by so his injustice may be evil wrought upon still another, to which it is manifestly my duty to a stop as to be forestall my own toward. Wherefore, if I would be righteous as I am bound to restrain my neighbor, by force if needful, and all those injurious enterprises from which, through a better disposition and by the help of heaven, I do myself restrain. Rhyme. Noun. Agreeing sounds in the terminals of verse, mostly bad, the verses themselves, as distinguished from prose, most dull, usually and wickedly spelled rhyme. R-H-Y-M-E. Rhymer. Noun. A poet regarded with indifference or disesteem. The rhymer quenches his unheeded fires. The sound surceases and the senses expires. Then the domestic dog to east and west expounds the passions burning in his breast. The rising moon over the enchanted land pauses to hear and yearns to understand. By Mowbray Mouths. Riot. Noun. A popular entertainment given to the military by innocent bystanders. RIP A careless abbreviation of requisite in pace, attesting to indolent goodwill to the dead, according to the learned Dr. Dridge. However, the letters originally meant nothing more than reductus in pulvis. RIGHT Noun A religious or semi-religious ceremony fixed by law, precept, or custom with the essential oil of sincerity carefully squeezed out of it. Ritualism Noun A Dutch garden of God where he may walk in rectilinear freedom, keeping off the grass. Road Noun 
a strip of land along which one may pass from where it is too tiresome to be where it is too futile to go. All roads, howsoever they diverge, lead to Rome, whence, thank the good Lord, at least one leads back home. By Bory the Bald Robber Noun A candid man of affairs. It is related to Voltaire that one night he and some traveling companion lodged at a wayside inn. The surroundings were suggestive, and after supper they agreed to tell robber stories in turn. Once there was a farmer general of the revenues, saying nothing more, he was encouraged to continue. That, he said, is the story. Romance Noun Fiction that owes no allegiance to the god of things as they are, and the novel the writer's thought is tethered to the probability as a domestic horse to the hitching post, but in romance it ranges at will over the entire region of the imagination, free, lawless, immune to bit and renown. Your novelist is a poor creature, as Carlyle might say, a mere reporter. He may invent his characters and plot, but he must not imagine anything taking place that might not occur, albeit his entire narrative is candidly a lie, while he imposes his hard condition on himself and he drags at each remove a lengthening chain of his own forging he can explain in ten thick volumes without illuminating by so much as a candle's ray the black profound of his own ignorance of the matter. There are great novels for great writers have laid waste their to the powers to write them, but it remains true that far and away the most fascinating fiction that we have is The Thousand and One Nights. Rope Noun An obsolescent appliance for reminding assassins that they too are mortal. It is put about the neck and it remains in place one holds life long. It has been largely superseded by a more complex electrical device worn upon another part of the person, and this is rapidly giving place to an apparatus known as the preachment. Rostrum. Noun. In Latin, the beak of a bird or the prow of a ship. In America, a place from which a candidate for office energetically expounds the wisdom, virtue, and power of the rabble. Roundhead. Noun. A member of the parliamentary party in the English Civil War, so called from his habit of wearing his hair short, whereas his enemy, the cavalier wore his long. There were other points of difference between them, but the fashion in hair was the fundamental cause of the quarrel. The cavaliers were royalists because of the king. The indolent fellow found it more convenient to let his hair grow than to wash his neck. This is the roundheads, who were mostly barbers and soap boilers, deemed an injury to trade, and the royal neck was therefore the object of their particular indignation. Descendants of the belligerents now wear their hair all alike, but the fires of animosity enkindled in that ancient strife smolder to this day beneath the snows of British civility. Rubbish. Noun. Worthless matter such as the religions, philosophies, literatures, arts, and sciences of the tribes infesting the regions lying due south from Borapolis. Ruin. Verb. To destroy, specifically to destroy a maid's beliefs in the virtue of maids. Rum. Noun. Generically, fiery liquids that produce madness and total abstainers. Rumor. Noun. A favorite weapon of the assassins of character. Sharp. Irresistible by mail or shield. By guard unparried as by flight unstayed. A serviceable rumor let me wield against my enemy no other blade. His be the terror of a foe unseen, his the neutral hand upon the hilt, and mine the deadly tongue, long slender keen, hinting a rumor of some ancient guilt. So I shall slay the wretched without a blow, spare me to celebrate his overthrow, and nurse be my valor for another foe. By Joel Buxter Russian. Noun. A person with a Caucasian body and a Mongolian soul. A Tartar emetic. This completes the letter R of the Devil's Dictionary by Ambrose Bierce.